Thank you, Excellency. Mr. Minister, in the name of the Minister of Defense of Cameroon, Mr. Mebengo Edgar Allen, I wish to sincerely thank you, the organizers, for this invitation. It's unfortunately he could not be here present, so he has asked me to come and deliver this talk on his behalf. It also gives us the opportunity to let the world know that is a terrorist organization named Boko Haram that is threatening world's peace in West Africa and Central African states, mostly Nigeria, Cameroon, Chad, and Niger. To conduct the war is a crusade against Islam or an episode of any war of civilizations. The reality is simple. There is no one side, us, proponents of a modern and tolerant society, guaranteeing the exercise of human rights, including those of religion and the representative of democracy, and the other side, that is the side of Boko Haram and movements of like him, there are the supporters of an obscurantist, tyrannical society without any regard for human dignity. You may agree with us that there is a total incompatibility between these two models of society, and hence, a total comprehensive impossibility. So we need to put an end to the actions of activists of terrorism movements. This speech was delivered by the President of Cameroon on the 16th of February 2015 during the COPAX meeting of Central African states. And receiving UA wishes January this year, the head of state of Cameroon said to a global problem, we need a global solution. Boko Haram is a terrorist group that has been acting in Nigeria trying to bring Islamist sect mostly within the states of Borno, Yobe, and Bauchi in Nigeria. It advocates radical and puritanical Islamism like in uh, uh, Taliban of Afghanistan, rejecting modernism and introducing Sharia law in the northern part of Nigeria. They were using vehicles, bicycles, motorcycles, telephones, but this group says the white man education is a sin. Boko Haram was first organized by the first leader was Mohammed Sharif. It was founded in 2002 by Mohammed Yusuf, who died in 2009. The first aim of the SEG was to expand all over Nigeria the Sharia law, which was already applied in the northern part of Nigeria. Boko Haram added the creation of the Caliph, comprising the territory of former Kanembono Empire, with the first step being the conquest of Goza in the Bono state by Abubakar Sheku, his scoring charismatic leader. The northeast part of Nigeria, which is the Kanuri ethnic base, is since 2004 the favorite operation zone of Boko Haram terrorist group with activities extended today in neighboring countries like Cameroon, Niger, and Chad, which are the targets of Boko Haram. This group targets without discrimination and blindly killing all military personnel, attacks barracks, kills Christians and Muslims alike. It has no definition. No one knows what it wants. It recruits children who attend poorly organized Quranic schools or children from poor families. The movement who becomes politicized attacks not only jobless youth, but also politicians who use it for political purposes. Until 2008, demonstrations by Boko Haram under the leadership of Yusuf Mohammed were tolerated and managed by the Nigerian government. Using the administrative tolerance, this group spread all over the northern part of Nigeria. It regretted in increment in many areas and wants to meet the Taliban of uh, Al-Qaeda Islamic Muslim State. The result of its ascendancy was a generalized uprising in 2009 in the northern part of Nigeria, where its leader was killed. Boko Haram members used mostly rocket attacks arms, light heavy machine guns, light armored vehicles, mortars, assault rifles, and improvised uh, mines that they put on the road to attack either vehicles or personnel. The main capacities of Boko Haram uh, that it can easily recruit from political and uh, the low-paid population. It has external 
intermediaries made of Islamic organizations, mostly in Asian countries that provide financial support. It also enjoys support from mosques and Quranic schools, really bleeding grounds for indoctrinal and recruitment. It easily organized transborder crime due to its porosity of the borders, the proliferation of light firearms and contraband economy, and the psychological operation facility. How does Boko Haram operate? First of all, it has a classical method of attack. It attacks like military units using heavy and modern military equipment. It generally aims and conquers territories. It is also an asymmetric organization that uses suicide bombers, looting, adoption, and targeted killing. Of late, Boko Haram members entered one of our towns called for the call and killed. Even Muslims were worshiping at the early hours. So this is a group that does not discriminate when they wants to uh, kill. The line of supply, Boko Haram first accounts on the population of the conquered localities. When Boko Haram conquers an area, all the banks are looted, all the pharmacies are looted, everything that can be used, even the ammo cars are taken away for their personal use. And with this, they have started attacking the neighboring countries like Cameroon, Chad, and Niger. It also has arms and ammunitions flowing from Libya, Sudan, Chad, Central African Republic, and Nigeria, and Western military lobbies. In Nigeria, mostly all the areas that attack their ammo vehicles, everything they find, arms and munitions are taken for their own interests. Financial support. The financial support of the SEC remains a mystery, but from some political cycles of Niger, Northern Nigeria, it is believed that some of the, political, the politicians also support this movement. It also takes hostages. In Cameroon, we have had about four hostage, main hostage takes. We have a family of Fournier was taken with seven of them with the children. We have missionaries who were taken. We have a, a, a prime minister's wife was taken hostage. At times when these hostages are taken, it's not sacred for anybody that some ransom are being paid. And they also use using this ransom to finance the organization. With the death of the leader on July 26, Another wave of violence broke following simultaneous attacks by Islamic in four states in northern Nigeria, Bauchi, Borno, Yobo, and Kano. On 30th of July 2009, security forces restored peace. Yusuf Mohammed, leader of Boko Haram, is killed in a confrontation. The government in power was then accused of his death, which hardened the movement that then restructured. On the 14th of August 2009, it launched and appeal to the Jaid movement to join it. Continuity of identification of Boko Haram after the death of Yusuf. Prisons, churches, and mosques, bus stations, hotels, schools, drinking places, and government buildings are targeted. Even the government declared to negotiate, the government of Nigeria to negotiate with Boko Haram on the July 2011 did not stop the latter from continuing the armed struggle, claiming attacks against the United Nations representation in Abuja on the 26th of August, 2011, during which 18 people were killed. On the 4th of May, 2013, in reaction to the serial attack, President Goodluck declared the state of emergency in three states of northeast of the country, Yobe, Adamawa, and Borno, and ordered the closing of the frontiers with Cameroon, Chad, and Niger. All neighboring countries could no longer communicate with Nigeria. Therefore, Nigeria moved, launched a large-scale attack offensive against Boko Haram, harm which significant effects, collateral damages, and most of the inhabitants at the boundary areas flew to Cameroon. What is the interest of Cameroon with Boko Haram? From the geostrategic position between Chad and Nigeria, which is an extension into Lake Chad, the far north region of Cameroon served as an alternative base, a base or a corridor of supply of arms and ammunition, foodstuff and others in favor of this sect. So due to the defeat of the Niger army and the strength of its sacred support, and in manipulation of both war and financial equipment, the terrorist group of Boko Haram had to change the policy. It included the national northern part in the capital of its caliphate, 
therefore trying to annex the northern part of Cameroon to add to its new caliphate. All this regardless of the consequences of the socioeconomic level of our country. To face these attacks, our government had to take two major decisions. The first was at the military level. It comprises the reinforcement of the defense posture in the field, where a new combined unit military force region was created and reinforced. At the political and diplomatic level, the head of state of Cameroon with other head of states, Chad and France, held a meeting on the 17th of May 2014 in uh, France, where the head of state of Cameroon declared war on Boko Haram and said to a global treat, we need a global response. This called a targeted national, sub and international solidarity movement. The Republic of Chad entered the conflict and the same way in the extraordinary summit of the ECAS took place with a resolution that gave birth to the multinational force to be deployed on the field. Today, the result of all these efforts is the significant reduction of the operation, operational capacity of the Boko Haram terrorist group and a return to substantial calm that is being consolidated daily. Indeed, fear has changed hands. The fear is now on the side of Boko Haram. We, from the attacks of Boko Haram, we can briefly say we had some casualties. About 227 attacks were carried out in our territory since war was declared on Boko Haram. We lost 97 soldiers. We killed 529 Boko Haram elements. Civilians, about 992 were killed, and about 114 civilians were abducted. Chad, who joined Cameroon early this year, has already lost 71 soldiers who were killed, and 416 soldiers have been wounded. The impact of Boko Haram on the northern part of our country. The far north region shares a long border. We have a border between Cameroon from uh, Bakasi right to up. We have a border of about 1,635 kilometers with Nigeria. But the far north alone, where Boko Haram operates has registered tremendous damages. Socially, we have mass movements of population. About 60,000 Cameroonians have run from the border region into the internal part of Cameroon. We have about 36,000 refugees who are in one of the camp called Minalawo, and about 4,000 in the other camp of refugees, all from Nigeria, who are being fed by Cameroonians. The impact on our custom revenue, we derive most of our taxes our income from tax uh, revenue. The posts of Photocall and Lemani have been closed. So for the past two years, we don't have any revenue from this custom post. We have the impact on terrorism. Well, news has gone over the world that Cameroon is a risk country. So all the terrorist activities have been stopped. And we used to derive enough money from our terrorism, uh, terrorism activities. In the impact on business activities, the boundary between Cameroon being closed, uh, Cameroon and Nigeria being closed, movements have been stopped. Cameroon uh, is feeding Chad as a landlocked country. Nigeria, uh, Chad used to have its growth either from Nigeria or from the sea. Mr. Unfortunately, Mr. General, Mr. Mr. General, how many minutes uh, do you want more? Because I, I, you I already finish, you are I talking 15 minutes. minutes. You said that uh, it means there is no now we want time to say Mr. Time. White, you said that to speak. So you said, how many minutes do we want? I'm finished. One minute. Excellent. Excellent. We want to thank our foreign partners, mostly Russia, especially as we are speaking, there's a delegation of Chadian delegation, a Russian delegation in Cameroon, to, who are assisting us with equipment and uh, other things. We have the French, the Chinese, the Japanese, and other donors, the Chad Basin Commission, and the population that has mobilized to also support the government during the war. So we want to thank you sincerely. As others said, we have only few difficulties. We don't have the means, the ammunition, the financial need to fight them, but we think with the will of the international, international organization, we are going to get through. Thank you very much. Uh.